Nityanandam, welcome everyone uh, to our Nitya Yoga session this morning here in Playa del Carmen. So I'll just be sharing a few tips about um, your, your practice, your uh, asana practice, breathing uh, tips, breathing techniques, and of course the right inner space to, to hold when you, or to, or to cultivate when you go through your practice. As we know, Nitya Yoga is not about, or not just about the movement, um, but the life you infuse into the movement, the intention, the space of completion that you bring into the practice. So with this, let's just um, go in right into our um, posture today. Or maybe I can say preparation for posture. So what you'll want to do here is find the posture Vajrasana. From here, what we'll do is build a lot of connection. Uh, your arms, shoulders, back, legs, your abdomen, your back, your lower back, everything is interconnected. So when you do your asanas, the idea is to feel that connection and breathe and let the, um, your inner potential energy be awakened to its peak. So, what you'll want here is to have, of course, a firm surface. So here I'm playing with the sand. Um, okay, so here we are. The first practice to start building that connection and the strength, your core strength, to kind of lift your body up, especially going into a posture like Vajrali Mudra, which is a handstand, holding that handstand and feeling stable. So these practices will help you to take it step by step into the Vajrali Mudra. So you can do that almost on a daily basis. You don't have to do it every day, but if you practice daily, at least some three, four times a week, you can easily do that. Un unless you find that suddenly you get your, your wrists are a little bit uh, weak, I suggest you do warming up of the wrists before the practice. Okay, so this can be incorporated in, in the middle of a Surya Namaskar or once you finish your sun salutation and you go into a transition to sitting postures, you can easily do this uh, small uh, exercise. So here you are in Vajrasana. What you'll do here is initially you can place your hands Try to keep the tip of your fingers in line with the knees, okay? So tip of the fingers in line with the heels, in, with the knees, and your palms will be firm on the ground. Now that's very important. When you go into handstand, your base become, becomes your, your hands and your arms. So unless you have that connection really well established from the hand, the posture will just become unstable and you'll fall down. So the idea is to go step by step but really build that strength and the stability in the posture. So your hands are firm on the ground and you can kind of push the ground and feel what happens when you when you push the ground with your hands. You'll kind of feel it and even the fingertip, the very tip can kind of press down into the ground like you want to grip so feel like the whole hand, each finger, the palms firm on the ground. Now the exercise here, you'll have to keep your arms straight and kind of make your chest hollow inside. So you push through the arms and let the space between the shoulder blades expand and you make your chest a little hollow. You'll keep looking a point right in front of you, not too far and not too close, just maybe some half a meter or, or 30 centimeters in front of you, one foot in front. And what you'll do here from Vajrasana, you inhale and as you exhale, don't, don't lose anything that we've said before, the hands are firm, arms are extended, hollow the chest slightly and now just start to lift your hips, keep the tip of the fingers, the feet on the ground. So, so the top of the foot stays on the ground and all you do is inhale and exhale. Now when you do that, keep your arms strong, 
and really feel like it's the very base of the abdomen that's that's being activated and lifting the hips up so you'll have to feel it below the um, belly button okay that's where you want to feel now inhale and exhale each time you exhale you can even come a little higher lift the hips press through the ground look the point right in front of you inhale and exhale so I suggest you do maybe 10 of these so you'll do 10 of these keeping the feet on the ground top of tip of the fingers tip of the feet are on the ground and what that will do is start to build the arm shoulder the back strength and even the legs will start to be very active okay as a counter posture after you do 10 you can go to Ushtra Nisadhanasana so you come here on the knees hands initially can be on the hips and press the hips forward draw the shoulders back lift the chin the chest look up and breathe here in the heart slowly you'll come up okay that was the first progression now this one it's going into a tuck planche which means from Vajrasana keep again the hands firm on the ground arms are straight strong and hollow the chest slightly inhale now as you exhale what you'll try to do is keep the feet off the ground so you really have to activate inhale and exhale you'll exhale up inhale down inhaling and exhale now that's going to be a lot more difficult than the one you did before but you can just practice it how many you can do in a day that's fine maybe today you'll do one or maybe not even one today that's completely fine okay there's no um, competition at all the progression is better to be slower than trying to just push yourself and then uh, develop an injury okay so so the first exercise from Vajrasana you'll just lift the hips and maybe what you can do initially is come down and use that negative um, force just lifting the feet and then try to control the descent so when you come up lift the feet and come down slowly before you go to the tuck planche okay so this is the first progression and when you're done go to Ustrani Sadhanasana hands on the hips or if you want if you extend your arms just make sure that you don't put the weight on the heels the weight is actually on the on the knees keep the hips forward and just use your your hands like a grip like a claw and you you just hold on to the um, heel and keep drawing your your hips forward opening the heart open the shoulders and breathe here and when you're done just stay with the spine straight Mula Bandha slightly activated at the pelvic floor just gently pressing keep your spine long and straight and the chin slightly down towards the throat and just feel what happens in your spine in your whole body breathing and from here just try to include this small portion into your uh, daily Nitya Yoga practice and you see that you start developing a lot of strength uh, in the shoulders back muscles all around the core legs everything will start to connect okay so that's the first one and uh, looking forward to help you with uh, more progressions um, and really feel the joy of Nitya Yoga. So, thank you. Thank you to everyone. Nityananda.